A group of scenes from Macbeth, comprising an outline of the play. Macbeth was the kinsman of Duncan, the old king of Scotland, and also one of his generals. He is returning victorious from battle with his fellow general Banquo, hoping that as a reward. On his way, he meets the three weird sisters who prophesy his kingship, and he writes to his wife to tell her the news. But when he arrives at the palace, his hopes are dashed, for Duncan names his young son Malcolm as his successor. In the meantime, Lady Macbeth receives his letter. They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air, into which they vanished. While I stood wrapped in the wonder of it, came missives from the king who all hailed me Thane of Cordor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with Hail King, that shall be. <sighs> this have I thought good to deliver to thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightest not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised thee. Lay it to thy heart, and farewell. Glams thou art, and Cordor, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily. Wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thou'dst have great lambs, that which cries, Thus must thou do, if thou have it. And that which rather thou dost fear to do, that wishes should be undone. Hide thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid would seem to have thee crowned with all. Servant enters. What is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. Thou mad to see it! Is not thy master with him? Who were so would have informed for preparation. So please you, it is true. Our fame is coming. One of my fellows had the speed of him, who almost dead for breath, had scarcely more than would make up his message. Give him tending. He brings great news. The raven himself is horse that coaxed the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse, but no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers. Wherever in your sight the substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell. But my keen knife see not the wound it makes, 
nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Macbeth enters. Great glams, worthy corridor. <laughs> Greater than both, by the all hail hereafter. Uh -huh. Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love. Mm. Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. <laughs> These strange matters. To beguile the time in your eye, your hand, your tongue, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for. You shall put this night's nice business into my dispatch. It shall to all our nights and days to come. If so be sovereign sway and master them. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. <laughs> King Duncan arrives at the castle. But in the middle of the banquet given in his honor, Macbeth suddenly leaves the table in an agony of fear and indecision. If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his deceased success, that but this blow might be the be-all and the end-all here, but here, upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. But in these cases we still have judgment here, that we but teach bloody instructions, which being taught, return to play the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, that his virtues shall plead like angels, trumpet tongued, against the deep damnation of his taking off, and pity like a naked newborn babe striding the blast. Or heaven's cherubim host upon the sightless couriers of the air shall blow the horrid deed in every eye. The tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only bolting ambition, which all leaps its cell and falls on the other. Oh, now, what news? He is almost soaked. Why have you left the chamber? Has he asked for me? No, you're not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. Oh. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which should be worn now in their newest glass. Not cast aside too soon. Was the hook drunk, or did you dress yourself? Had it slept since, and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time, such I have come to thy love. Oh, what is it? Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valor? That thou art in desire, wouldst thou have that which thou esteems the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat of the added... Pretty beast! I dare do all that may become a man, who dares do more is none. What beast was then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you dares do it, then you were a man, and to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. No time, no place to get it here. And yet, you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake you. <laughs> I have given suck and know how tender it is to love the babe that looks me. I would, when it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out. Oh! Had I so sworn as you have done to this? If we should fail, 
we fail. But screw your courage to the sticking place, and we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to go rather should his day's hard journey soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will lie with wine and wassail so convinced that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume and the receipt of reason, a limbic only, when in swinish sleep their drenched natures lie as in a death. What cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers? who shall bear the guilt of our great quell. Bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they have done it? Who dare receive it other, as we shall make our griefs and clamors roar upon his death? I am settled <laughs> and bend up each corporation to this terrible feat. Away and mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide, but the false heart doth know. It is the dead of night. All the castle is asleep. Macbeth enters the courtyard with a servant. Go bid thy mistress when my drink be ready. She strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. <gasps> Is this a, a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come, let me touch thee. I have thee not. And yet I see thee still. Thou not fatal vision sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain? I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalst me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. My eyes are made the fool to the other senses. Or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon got some blood, which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to my eyes. <sighs> now, for the one half world, Nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtained sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withering murder, alarmed by his sentinel the wolf, who howls his watch. Thus, with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing stride, towards his design, moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm said earth, hear not my steps which way they walk, for fear the very stones creep to my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. While thy threat, he lives, words to the heat of deeds, to cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which has made them drunk has made me bold. <laughs> what have quenched them has given me fire. It was the owl that shoot, the fatal bellman that gives the sterns to good night. He is about it. The doors are open, and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their possets, 
that death and nature do contend about them whether they live or die. Vivi! Arak! Alfredem, wait and is not done! The attempt and not the deed confounds us. Hark! I laid their daggers ready, he could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. <gasps> my husband! I have done the deed. Did you not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did you not speak? When? Now. I. Hush! Who lies in the second chamber? Don Ordain. <gasps> this is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. There's one did laugh in sleep, and one cried murder. That they did wake each other. I stood and heard them. But they did say their prayers and addressed them again to sleep. There were two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and amen the other, as they had seen me with his hangman's hands. Listening their fear, I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. Therefore, <laughs> that I pronounce amen. I had most need of blessing, and our men stuck in my throat. It will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. That death doth murder sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. The death of each day's life. Sore labor's bath. Balm of hurt minds. Great nature's second course. Chief nourish your life. What do you mean? Still it cries, sleep no more to all the house. Lamas have murdered sleep, and therefore Cordor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? <laughs> Why, where the thing you unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things? Go get some water. And wash this filthy witness from your hands. <laughs> Why did you bring the daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them and smear the sleeping rooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid you think what I've done. Look round again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose. Give me the daggers. For sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. It is the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. <laughs> if it is bleed. I gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. How is it with me when every noise appalls me? <sighs> what hands are here? Oh, they pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean Wash this blood clean from my hand. No. This my hand will rather the multitude in the seas in Canadine, making the green one red. My <laughs> hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. <laughs> I dare a knocking at the south entry. Retire me to my chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it then? Your constancy has left you unattended. <laughs> ah, more knocking. Get your night down. Lest the case can call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, for best not know myself. Wake not come with thy knocking. I would thou couldst. In the early morning, the General Macduff discovers the murder of King Duncan and rouses the castle. After a scene of wild confusion and mutual suspicion, Macduff and Duncan's two sons, Malcolm and Donalbane, flee, and Macbeth seizes the throne. But being under suspicion himself, he suspects and fears everyone, especially Banquo. We see him now seated on his throne on the occasion of a feast he is giving to his thanes. 
To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus. Our fears in Banco stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. Tis much he dares, and to the dauntless temper of the mind he adds a wisdom that will guide his valor to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked, as it is said Mark Antony's was by Caesar's. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king on me and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my gripe, thence to be wrenched with an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, or Banco's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered, put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them, and my eternal jewel given unto the common enemy of man to make them kings. The seed of Banco kings. Rather than so, come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. Who's that? And he goes out to meet two disgruntled followers and persuades them to waylay and murder Banquo. Lady Macbeth enters with a servant. Is Banquo gone from court? Say to the king, I would attend his leisure for a few words. Nought's had all spent when our desire is got without content. It is safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How oh, now, my lord, why do you keep alone of saddest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think on? Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done, is done. We have scotched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself. I saw our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. But let the frame of things become disjoint. Both the world suffer dissolution. Uh, we will eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Better be with the dead who wait again our place of gain to peace than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Sweden hath done his worst. Nor steel, nor poison, malice domestic, foreign levy. Nothing can touch him further. Come on, gentle, my lord. Sleek all your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. So shall I, love, and so I pray be you. Let your remembrance apply to Banco. <gasps> Present him eminence both with eye and tongue. Our place is still unsafe. The wires that we must lave our honor beneath flattering streams and make our faces visage to our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave this. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banco and his fiance live. But in them nature's copy is not eternal. No, there's comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou token. Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, ere to black Hecate summons the shard-born beetle with his drowsy hums, hath rung night's yawning peal, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Sealing night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces 
that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to the rookie wood in you alone. Good things of day begin to droop black agents to their praise do rouse. Uh -huh. Thou marvelst at my words, but hold thee still, things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So pretty, go with me. Macbeth welcomes his pains at a feast in the great hall, where later the murdered Banquo is an unwelcome guest. You know your own degrees. Sit down. A first and last, a hearty welcome. Ourselves will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her straight, but at best time we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. To my heart speaks, they are welcome. Sweet remembrance, sir. Now, get the guest and wait on appetite and health on both. Here had we now our country on our roof. Were the great person of our banco present, whom may I rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance? His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Please with your highness to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. <laughs> what is the move, your highness? Which of you have done this? What, my good lord? Now, well, can't I say I did it? Let me shake that gory lock to be. Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus. And have been to his youth. Pray you keep seat. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought he will again be well. If much you know him, you shall offend him and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. Are you a man? I am a bold one that dare do that and make a little of a matter that I fall the devil. Oh, Papa, stop. This is a very painful work here. This is here, uh, drawn back on what you said, did you think, Duncan? Oh, these flaws and stark impostors to prove here would well become a woman's story at a winter fire authorized by her granddam. Shame itself. <laughs> Why do you make the faces? That all is done you're looking on a stool. Hey, behold, look, there, I see you. Why, what shall I? If thou canst not speak to How did my grave must send those whom he buried back? Our monument shall be the more to kite. What? Quite unmanned in folly. As I stand here, I saw this. Why did for shame? Blood hath been shed ere now, the olden time, a human statue purged against the wheel. I am since two murders have been performed so terrible for the year. The time hath been that when the brains were out, the man would die, and there are in. But now they rise again with pretty mortal murders, and their tongues and push us from our stools. This is more strange than to have murdered. <laughs> My worthy lord, <laughs> your noble friends bless you. <laughs> I do suggest. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity, which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and help to all, then I'll sit down. Give me some wine. Till fall. I drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our dear friend, the thankful, whom we miss. Would he were here. To all and him we toast, and all to all. Our beauties and the pledge. Hold and pick the sight that the earth hide be. Thy bones are manifest, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes that thou dost bear with. Think of this good fear as but as a thing of custom. It is no other, only it spoils the pleasure of the time. One man dare, I dare. Approach thou like a rugged Russian bear. The iron rhinoceros or the hurricane tiger. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves will never tremble. I'll be alive again, and dare me to the desert with a sword. 
It's trembling I and have it then to so test me the baby of a girl. And forever shadow on me and murder me. Come! My soul being gone, I am a man again. Who you sit still? You have displaced the mayor, broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. And such things be and overcome us like a summer cloud without our special wonder? You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe, when now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks while mine is lost to fear. What sights, my lord? Nay, hey, you speak uh, not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not of an order as you're going, but go at once. Good night. A kind good night to all. Uh,